We invited some patients um, to come up and talk and kind of give briefly give their story um, about their experience and journey um, with treatment here. So if um, the invited patients that we talked about before, if you want to come up and we can. Mr. Lambert and Donatelli, thanks. Want to come sit here? I don't know who wants to start, but you know, I think if you could tell, talk about kind of your experience and and give us your perspective of kind of what you had to go through or going through, and uh, I think that would be really helpful. My name's uh, Joe Donatelli. Um, I was diagnosed with melanoma about, I don't know how it all kind of runs together, maybe four years ago, five years ago. Started out with a uh, little mole on my back, had that removed, uh, had some uh, lymph nodes biopsied, uh, they were negative, and, uh, oh, sorry. They, uh, that came back negative, so everything was good at that point. And about a year later, I, uh, I went to the uh, doctor, emergency room, uh, a little bit of abdominal pain, and I, uh, I had uh, some tumors in uh, my uh, kidneys, lungs, and uh, proceeded from there. Uh, went with the uh, immunotherapy first, a couple rounds of that. And at a stage during that, I developed a tumor on my uh, spine, which uh, fractured my C3 vertebrae. Um, had the surgery to repair that. Following that, finished the immunotherapy and started on the uh, targeted BRAF therapy, which I've been on for over a year now and has worked really well. And so far, everything's been really good. as good as him. I have to go back to my notes from 13 years ago. <laughs> 13 years ago, I went to my family doctor and had a suspicious mole removed. Uh, the good news was my family doctor told me that I needed to come in and see him and the cancer was gone. And I was like, yeah, and we ha high-fived each other, but he says you have to see an oncologist. Well, I was a little bit confused, because if the cancer was gone, why would I have to go see a cancer doctor? So after meeting my girlfriend who lived in Philadelphia at the time, who is now my wife, they told me about a place called Fox Chase, which they live close to. So I immediately transferred my records down here, and Fox Chase did a little story on me. I submitted a story in it, sort of, I'm going to read off the story. Uh, I know there's people that are being live streamed right now, so they don't have access to Fox Chase, and I don't know if there's people in the audience here that are dealing with melanoma or any type of other cancer that are just here to learn about melanoma, but they don't have access to Fox Chase. But my experience really occurred through Fox Chase. So, like, I owe them the rest of my life because I wouldn't be here raising my daughter today without them helping me. I was 34 years old when I was diagnosed with melanoma. Today I'm cancer-free and enjoying life with my wife Kathleen and our daughter Zoe. In May 2005, I had gone to a family doctor to have a suspicious mole removed from my right shoulder. Within a few days, the doctor called to give me the diagnosis. When we hung up, I called Fox Chase Cancer Center right away, which is about 60 miles from where I live in Allentown, PA. From the first call, I was met with care, courtesy, and professionalism, but I was still terrified of what was to come. I scheduled my first appointment with Eileen Segerson, an oncology doctor. She performed a wide lateral incision in the area of my original lesion, uh, lesion and a sentinel node bi biopsy. My original mole was on my back. 
she originally cut the, the scar larger, and she also did a biopsy of my neck. Uh, I was so afraid going into the procedure of the morning, I reported to the hospital that I actually walked out. When I returned, her team of doctors spent extra time with me to calm my nerves and help me get through the day. The biopsy showed that the melanoma had spread to my lymph, lymph nodes. After discovering, discovering my treatment op options with Dr. Segerson, I decided to undergo a full neck dissection to remove 53 lymph nodes from the affected area. Dr. Lango, a head and neck surgeon at Fox Chase, then joined my treatment team. Once again, the caliber of care that I received from Dr. Lango and her team was second to none. Everything was clearly explained to me, preparation for the surgery itself, the subsequent hospital stay, and the post-op care instructions I took home with me. I knew without a doubt that I was receiving the best care possible. Dr. Lango gave me the good news after surgery that there was no evidence of disease, and I recovered feeling positive about the future. Lainey Martin, who used to work here, had taken over then for the next five years and I would see her. I lived my life in three month interview intervals and it, it sort of bothered me because it was like every three months I have to go and see, oh my God, is this cancer back? And, and I just could not keep living like this. I would keep my wife up at night. I would circle the bed. But at the same, same time, I started thinking, it's not just me. It's everybody that's in that hospital or is in a cancer center. What about the young children that had cancer? So I tried to get over that, and I had some anxiety issues which were dealt with. My nerves were dealt with. And, and they all, all helped me through this. So every time I come down here to have a test, they would immediately call me within like 48 hours and say, hey, continue on with your life. So the three-month visits went to six-month visits. The six-month visits went to my yearly visit. And then one day, it was 10 years later, I come walking into here, and my doctor gave me a hug, and I was like, gee, what's that about? And she said, today is the last day I'm going to see you because you're 10 years out. And as happy as I was, I cried because this was part of my team for 10 years. So what, what I can say is a lot of things that the doctor was showing on here has changed because when they did my surgery, they went, it was a very long surgery and they went extremely deep because the first couple lymph nodes were infected. She went even deeper and, and said she was running them they were back to the lab to check to make sure the cancer was gone. Now from, from what I heard from Dr. Pharma is they, they don't have to do that. They, they make a decision maybe just to pull out the first few. So what, what I can say is uh, if you have cancer, you know somebody that has cancer, just have, have hope and believe in your doctors. Don't be scared to ask questions. And, and let's face it, the, the cancer word does really stink, and not everybody makes it. But, but I think if, everybody, if you remain positive and you surround yourself with good people, I surrounded myself with my wife. I surrounded myself with her family. And even when I was down, she took over, and she, she did the positive thinking for me. My, I was very close to my doctors. I always asked questions. They were always there for me. I, I think those few things, if you keep that in the back of your head, it's, it's going to go a long way.